What's up, everybody, and welcome to the latest edition of the Falcons In Focus podcast brought to you by Ticketmaster, recorded in the Ticketmaster, Ticketmaster studios. studios. And we're here. I'm, I'm Scott Bear, by the way. Why don't I introduce myself? That's Tori McElhaney, man of the hour, brand new Atlanta Falcons linebacker, all-around havoc creator. That's your new nickname. <laughs> oh, awesome. uh, Caden Ellis joining the program. Caden, thank you so much for the time, man. Snaps. Thank snaps. you all for having me. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> right. <laughs> I like um, the snaps. So anyway, we're not going to start with today or even recently. Uh, well, sort of recently. I want you to take me back to New Year's Day, 2023. Is well, it? Yeah? Yeah. Yeah. No, like this like New Year's this, Day. Okay. It wasn't a, a previous New Year's Day. Uh, Saints-Eagles. Okay. I think you remember the score of that one. Yeah. Eagles are on cloud nine. The Saints come in. Yeah. Take care of business there. Um, what some people might not know about you is you had a relative – on the other sideline, yep. right? Christian was playing. Noah is also an eagle. Yes. On the, he's on the NFI list, right? Yes. So that's a huge deal for the Saints anyway. Yeah. What is that <laughs> like? Because I, I assume you've sort of played with your brothers on the same team or the same schools yep. or watched them play. Mm-hmm. Now you're opposite sidelines. Oh, it was fun. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. Tell us, it. Yep. Tell, Tell us about that. Oh, it. my gosh. First play on defense, I, I, <laughs> I get a sack. And I just, I, I just look straight for the sign, like, where you at? <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't find him, but I was uh, I'm looking for you. I know it wasn't against you, but uh, it was fun. You know, I, I was on, uh, I was still on punt uh, for special teams. And so my brother was uh, playing special teams. So he told me all week, he was like, you know, yeah, on pump block return, they're not letting me go against you. I'm not going to hold you up or rush against you. That was a lie. <laughs> <laughs> was he comes really? out and he's just it's straight up head on head, him and me going at it. And it, it was a lot of fun. It was uh, wow. laughing down the field. Our teammates are looking at us like, you're an idiot. It's like we're in the middle of a game, but we're just living a childhood dream. So oh we, we've seen parents of brothers on opposite sides like in baseball i think the nolas just did it where like the parents are wearing jerseys cut in half (laughs) for them Uh how did your parents handle that situation uh they were rooting hard for the saints because we needed the win and the eagles didn't i love it you know what true fans right there i can kind of understand understanding yes i like that a lot now you're actually the oldest of 12 is that correct it is that is we had to check the notes a couple times 12 12 one two (laughs) yeah 12 a lot of siblings i only have two other siblings i cannot imagine 12 what was growing up like that's the question what was growing up like with that many siblings it was just fun yeah you know it was just like it was just fun you know there's there was always something to do there was always people to hang out with you know it was it was fun, you know, a little scary because you got eleven younger ones looking up to you. Yeah, that's that, right. That that's was always that was always a little tough. Parents, yeah. you know, sometimes counting on me and you know my the next oldest, my sister Olivia. But at the end of the day, it was it was fun and just just such a such a blessing. Yeah. Now, what type of trouble did y'all get into? <laughs> like, what what are the stories from childhood where because you're like the parents can't possibly watch all of them at once? Right. Yeah. Right. So eventually, you can get into some trouble. I will be honest with you guys. I am a like at least always was like a full on kind of goody two shoes. Uh, like like rule follower. Like I was third parent. And okay. if oh, I caught my see. siblings doing something, I was going to correct it. Oh, <laughs> yeah. so you were like, okay, you were the enforcer. So I was the boring You're, one. Right. I was okay. extremely enforcer. boring. But you know, at the end of the day, when there's that many, yeah. and, and at the end of the day, because there's always like babies in the house. And for me, it's like when there's babies around, it's like, no, no, no. You can't have those quarters around. You can't be doing this. Yeah. You can't be doing that. Don't jump. You're going to land on – you know what I mean? So yeah. You were a stressed kid. No, he, he was just – I don't look at it that way, but maybe I was. Actually, <laughs> the regulator. Yeah, there yeah, you go. Yeah. Um, it, it sets you up for, like, later in life because yeah, you, you you're now a dad yourself. Yes. Yes. Two. Two? Two. Yep. Wow. That's awesome. Now, what was that like to go from being in a family, like, of 12 to now you have a family of your own? Oh, it's so much fun. Yeah. You know, it's – uh. Uh, it's just awesome getting to see you know your kids grow and and just smile you know smile about silly things fun things things they shouldn't be smiling about. it's just it, i just love love getting to watch them grow up it's awesome yeah. so what's the separation between you and and your youngest sibling uh 16 years 16, 16 years yeah. Wow. okay yeah so you were almost out of the house kind of when the youngest yeah. was born and everything I think I was a sophomore in high school yeah so, my yeah. my youngest sister is 11 years younger than me so yeah, it's so kind of like you don't really you were only living in the house with them for like maybe a few years a and then you go off to college and it's like 
But I always uh, say I'm like a fun aunt as much as I am like a big sister. That's 100%. Like a true. fun uncle. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, and look, like you, your dad played in the league and like we're going to get to him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But can we just just apply for your mother for sainthood right now? She's amazing. I, I mean, <laughs> she's like, amazing. We always think like, what does a grocery bill cost? In a house? You, you know, but, like, but <laughs> yeah. to, like, to keep that family together and look, she can be like scoreboard. I got three boys in the NFL and you, you know yeah. what I mean? Mm-hmm. That things she's done well. Yeah. But I think that that's like, again, you, you know, your dad was a pro bowler, you guys in the league, but let's not forget about your mom here. Oh, right? she's amazing. Yeah. yeah I mean, like she's... How key was she in keeping, keeping everything together? I think he's the right word. It's just like without her, it just doesn't happen. You know yeah, what I right? mean? It just, it just doesn't work. Like with, without her, it just, God knew what he was doing when he made that one. She, she's, <laughs> she's special. She's amazing. I, I read something where you had joked that, and I don't know if it's a joke. Maybe you're being for real, but you said, <laughs> <laughs> you said uh, that. <laughs> yeah, no, you said that you got your athletic ability from your mom. No, that's yep, right. There you go. Great, mm-hmm. cool. Yes, I did. Yeah. <laughs> you, you stand. You stand by that. I stand by that. Okay. Yeah, she was. She was a swimmer at the University of Utah. So um, yeah, she, she's, yeah, she's a good athlete. So you know, she's got. The lung capacity, you know, gave us the long arms, right, and, you know, yeah. all that good stuff. So yeah, no, she's she's a great athlete. Love that. Great but athlete. Plus, I mean, dad's the defensive tackle. You you got yeah. some bigger guys in the family. Like, let's not forget, in order to go sideline to sideline, you got to have a little. A your little, dad ain't running sideline. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> not, not like us. Don't tell him I said that. <laughs> <laughs> Don't watch dad. <laughs> but yeah, so now switching to the other parent, growing up the son of Luther Ellis, mm-hmm. right? Pro Bowler draft pick you know played in the league what was it like kind of just being around it, you, you're in the league now you, your your brothers are yeah. what was it like growing up in that kind of nfl type of environment you know you don't know any different i remember my dad yeah, would always, I, I would listen to my dad talking to my mom like when we'd come home from games we're like and this was more after he was done playing so we're a little bit older mm-hmm. but he was still able to you know go to detroit and mm-hmm. you know he'd do the coin toss or he'd you know speak before the game or you know but we'd be on the field with him beforehand and then be in the suite with like gm's owners people you know what right, i mean yeah. and it would just he i remember he'd, he'd get home and be like to my, to my mom he didn't know i was listening because mm-hmm. whatever little kids don't listen to anything and he's just sitting there like they just don't understand like they don't get what they were just able to do mm-hmm. you know what i yeah. mean yeah and it's so true like we had no idea. It was just normal to us. Like, right. yeah, dad plays football. Yeah, we go with that. It's like for us, it's just going with dad to work. Right. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, nothing different than that. So, um, you know, getting to see now kind of how hard it is to get here, getting to see how fans react to you when you s- just sign a shirt. You know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. Like, just yeah. the, the passion and the love that comes with, you know, the team repping your city. Like, it, it's just, it's really special now looking back on it and getting to kind of really try to take in those moments with a little more, uh, respect I guess yeah. you know what I mean it was interesting too because you talk about like not knowing that it wasn't like quote-unquote normal essentially yeah. like you were your father was drafted in 95 and you were born like a few months later mm-hmm. in like July right yeah. yeah the fact that you didn't like all you knew for the first what like six seven eight years of your life was like my dad, like what you said, my dad plays football. Yeah, it just 10 moved. years. Yeah, yeah. So until I was 10. Yeah. He was playing football. I mean, wow. to, to kind of like how has like, you know, being raised in this environment kind of like morphed your thinking into kind of being in the league yourself. You talk about the respect and, and like understanding it more now that you're older. Yeah. Like what else is there about like this lifestyle that you're like, oh, this actually isn't normal at all. Like, yeah. Yeah. and this is pretty cool. Uh, you know, I think just – you know, as a kid, it was kind of like, you you know, everyone wants to do what their dad does. Yeah. You know what I mean? And yeah. so for me, it was just kind of like, oh, yeah, I'll, I'll get to the NFL. Like, I'm, <laughs> I'm going to play it. You know what I mean? And then you hit bumps in the road, and you hit things where it's not easy, and it doesn't just come, and it doesn't just happen the way you thought it would. You know what I mean? Um, and honestly, I guess just from then to now, it sounds obvious, like, thinking back on it. But then I didn't realize just the amount of work. Yeah. And the amount of effort and the amount of call it luck, call it God's blessing that has to be like for it to work out. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like it's it's a lot and it's a lot that goes into it. And so, you know, I was thankful to the king that I'm here and just loving the opportunity and mm-hmm. loving this second opportunity to come play for the Falcons. And it's just it's just awesome. Do you have any memories of, of when you're younger and maybe like meeting someone that you're like, oh, my God, I can't believe I got to meet this person? <laughs> no Barry <laughs> Sanders would come to you know Bible study with the fam 
and he would always say to the kids like what's my name what's my name mm -hmm. I don't know. <laughs> I, don't I love know. it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, he's I just a shy, you, right. you know, kind of like quieter guy. And, yeah. and just like the fact that, you know, for us, it was just, oh, yeah, just cool. Like another guy. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Your dad's coworker. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. You work with my dad. Now looking back and watching his highlights, I'm like, Whoa. that dude's special. <laughs> you know <laughs> right. what I mean? That's like, cool. <laughs> there's very few people that have ever been able to do what he's able to do. Mm -hmm. Like this. Uh, so looking back, it's like, oh, yeah, I, yeah. I did meet this guy. Oh, yeah. I have a Barry Sanders signed helmet. But. At the moment, it was just like, thanks for the helmet, Dad. Here, right. in my closet. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, I'll, I'll figure it out. I'll find it later. Another day. Fine. Yeah. yeah. So let's go back to high school, you. You were a quarterback. Yeah. Right? And were you thinking that that was going to be your line of work? Ooh. Yeah, because I, I read something that you said that you – or maybe you didn't say it. I don't know. But someone said that you wanted to play quarterback in college. Yes. And, like, you had to kind of be talked into – playing linebacker oh i'd be more than talked into i was at <laughs> the utah and i went to utah camp i went to utah state camp and they were like will you switch they want to put me at safety will you switch mm. no mm. <laughs> i will not yeah. <laughs> i don't want to I mean? play defense. i am not i i am going to play quarter because i was kind of stubborn in it like i was like to me honestly like it felt like i would have failed if oh. i didn't oh, I accomplish okay. that because I, I set that as a goal and i wanted to do it you know what i mean and, yeah. and so when finally colleges didn't come calling, mm -hmm. eventually I had to be like, okay, I'll, I'll play a different position. Mm -hmm. And I'm thankful I am. I, you know, I'm thankful I get to play linebacker. It's, it's kind of worked out for it's you. Really, yeah. It's really <laughs> fun. Right, yeah. <laughs> so uh, thankful now. But yeah, it was, I was adamant on playing quarterback. <laughs> I think that's hilarious. <laughs> and I could not throw, but I was adamant <laughs> on playing quarterback. Honestly. <laughs> that's a nice little detail. Be like, oh, maybe. Right, yeah. No, I love it. Like, I, I'm going to do this. And I may not be that great at it, but I'm, I'm going to mm, do it. Sure yeah. as heck going to do it. Yeah. Oh, so, yeah, yeah, it took some more than just convincing. It took uh, – Failing <laughs> to, 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 to move Sometimes on. Sometimes we learn our best lessons through failure. Yes, yes. There Preach. There you yeah. go. Tori wisdom. <laughs> yeah, wisdom. <laughs> wisdom on the Falcons and Falcons podcast. Wisdom. Yes. That's rad. Th there everyone. you go. Uh, so Good usage of the word. Thank you. <laughs> um, so Tori dug this up. It, that as you were transitioning to the defensive side, you and your dad would have like – Skype calls and that, like, that he was like, like trying mini. to kind of help you like accelerate the, yeah. the, the, the the progress. Like what were those? So he was he would go. Like, oh, you guys did some good digging. This is like <laughs> freshman you. year college, small town Idaho <laughs> newspaper <laughs> digging. Uh, he um he was chaplain for the Broncos, and I was um or might have been even been before that. He was in Utah, then went to be chaplain of the Broncos. My for those he spent two years doing that while I was. Uh, two years without him and my brother at Idaho mm -hmm. and um, yeah I would like it was my first spring ball and I started off horribly like really? horribly <laughs> no. like awful <laughs> like playing so bad <laughs> like like not knowing what to do none of it and um, yeah he would he because obviously coaches over there would help me but um, getting to have my dad's opinion on it we, we would Skype and I would like show him the plays you know what I mean like what did I need to do different and some right. of it was pretty embarrassing but I was like dad help me <laughs> you know what I mean dad please and um, yeah he, he helped me he helped me grow a lot obviously and he had when I was younger but again I was trying to play quarterback the whole time and so getting to you know get a little bit of coaching points from him after each practice was, was really helpful yeah what was uh, maybe something he said to you or like a lesson or one of those like early lessons of watching in those like mini film sessions with him that you still to this day you think back on you're like it's a good thing I learned that hands hands yeah. hands okay. hands, hands. <laughs> and he told me and I still don't believe him but he told me when when he was um and when he got to college and because at first he went as a tight end and basketball player to play at Utah he got offers for both and he was gonna do both then he ended up getting shifted to uh, D line mm -hmm. and just did amazing. So never played basketball, and um, he told me that when he you know started to play D line, he would go to the, like a, the corner of his room and do a thousand hand strikes every night and every wow. morning, and he would do a thousand. So when I was getting cooked, he told me that. So I started trying to do a thousand. Yeah. I never got to a thousand. <laughs> and there's no way he'd got to a thousand. I do not believe it. It's like it didn't happen. <laughs> we need but video. I would, right? But I would do 500 at night and, and in the morning. Wow. And um, and it helped me. And that's um, one of the best traits I have. I think uh, when you look around the league at linebacker, I have one of the, if not the best, block destruction, in my opinion, mm -hmm. with my hands. And, um, you know, that's something that has carried me since 
playing at Idaho and getting cooked in spring ball. <laughs> <laughs> nice. I love that. And then you, you know, kind of eventually turn into an NFL draft pick. And it, it's always fascinating to me. There are so many different ways to make it in this league. Some are maybe easier if you're the first overall pick and some are harder if you're a seventh round pick and you have yeah. to, and you have to earn every mm-hmm. little thing. And it, to see what you did from, again, f- like from the outside, I'm sure that you were like, working hard and earning respect and all these things in practice, but to see what you did last season, I mean, it was pretty incredible by mm-hmm. any metric, right? But to get to that point, you know, you're, you're working on special teams, you're grinding, mm-hmm. you know, like what was that process like? What, was there a level of self-belief like, just give me a chance, <laughs> stay on there for three downs and we can do this thing. Yeah. Like what was that mental journey like for you from you, you get in and you're earning it to now you're doing it yeah. and it's going really well. Yeah. It was hard. You know, you, you could ask my wife, she'd probably be like, he's complained a lot. <laughs> 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 you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but, and I, I had moments where my linebacker coach, Coach Hodges, could tell you also, he, he I'm not going to complain, but talk to me a lot about mm-hmm. this. Um, you know, I had people like Trey Hendrickson, who's a great mm-hmm. player, be like, dude, you should just move to defensive end put on some weight and go pass rush because that was something that I was able to do since I got to the Saints but it was some of the other stuff that took time developing and learning um and you know coach Hodges I'm really thankful that I was able to play under him these last four years because or we had four years he was assistant but Mike Nolan as well um because he really helped me develop as an off-ball linebacker Mm -hmm. which was something that was was tough for me to do and something that maybe my dad couldn't help me quite as much with because at the end of the day he was but yeah. he played in the trenches, right. tight, one-yard gap. Mm-hmm. So some of the stuff was a little different. And right. so having to learn how to see the, the offense, how to um, read and diagnose the plays quickly, how to, you know, footwork and really the eyes, like all, all that was was tough. And so, you know, it took um, a lot of time, a lot of conversations about maybe I should just go be pass rusher, maybe I should go do this, maybe I should ask for a trade and go to a 3-4 team, maybe I should, you know what I mean, all yeah. these things. Um, I'm just thankful, you know, at the end of the day, we would always, you know, we pray. And God always just gave me a peace, you know, like a peace about it that, no, you're where you're supposed to be. You're where your family's supposed to be. You know, I'm getting you guys ready for something, for more things down the road. And um, I was able to continue working, continue sharpening those skills, making the weaknesses not a weakness and mm-hmm. making my strengths even better. And um, then when I was given the opportunity to, to go out there and play every down, mm-hmm. it came together. Yeah, Thank it all Lord. came together in a furious Tasmanian devil, seven <laughs> sacks and 78 you know? tackles and 11 starts type of world. Right, yeah, I mean, there are worse things. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, I, so I, I didn't, I, I knew about you, but I I watched, I watched a lot of a film, lot of him. a lot of Caden Ellis film the last couple, and it's like, it's like a heat-seeking missile through the gap, and the running <laughs> yeah. back's just like, I don't know if he ever sees you coming. It's just over. Uh, but I feel it, like it, you and Troy Anderson are going to get along so well. Yeah, I, I agree. Think, so. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, y'all are kind of cut from the same cloth, I think. Okay, we are wrapping up, because you've been talking for probably an hour and a half at this point. Same with some of and the other guys. talking that, even longer. Right, <laughs> yes, of course. You know, we're, That's the job, right? We're, right. <laughs> we all get paid to do this. Um, there are worse jobs to have, that is for sure. I agree. Um, <laughs> But to end the podcast, we always do a rapid fire. Ooh, so okay. are you, like, ner- nervous about this? Or are Sometimes you feeling- rapid fires are tough, but let's go. Okay, you ready? Yeah. All right. What was your favorite play of your career? Oh. <laughs> Immediately. <laughs> <laughs> Pressure's on. I. Th- oh, man. And you can go I college, think, too. I think yeah. it. Oh, college too. Yeah. Oh, I just threw a second. Troy Anderson. No, uh, (laughs) (laughs) um, no, it was was probably um, I I had Brandon Ayuk one on one in the slot. He had an option route on me, Mm. and for the longest time, one of the reasons the Saints wouldn't put me on the field was because of open space coverage. Mm -hmm. And I got him. Like you know, he's an amazing player, and you know, we'll run it back sometime. I'm sure, and maybe we'll get the best me next time. I'm I'm (laughs) trying to do my best not to let it happen. But at the end of the day, I I got him on that play, and. DA, the defense coordinator, came up to me right after that, that time on the sideline. It was just like, that was awesome. Aww. You know what I mean? Yeah. And that to me was just like, yes. Yeah, like, yeah. like the yes. hard work paid yes. off. Yeah. yeah, that to me was like, come on. You know, like mm-hmm. we can, like we got this. Yeah. So, Can we take a small small pause? Sure. You actually sacked Troy Anderson, the quarterback? Oh, yeah, because he oh was playing quarterback. Gosh. Yeah, he was a quarterback. I think I had a sack we and a half on him. Going oh, to a sack and a half. I think so. The film. I, Frank Bush, your new 
position coach. Yeah. He will definitely find the film. There is and no it, doubt about he that. He will absolutely run that into the ground oh, with man. how much he'll play I'm, that. I'm very excited the, for this. It's on the college highlight <laughs> film, so Perfect. you go find it. <laughs> or it's not Troy's, probably. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, Troy's was uh, running on us for like 100 something yards. Oh, yeah. that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, it was a give and take there. <laughs> <laughs> they won the game. Uh, <laughs> is there a, a TV show, a movie, something that you, you and your wife binge love right now? Ooh, my wife doesn't like watching TV. She like watches nothing. Okay. Me, I love Pokemon. Simple. I'm childish. Oh my gosh! I'm, I'm gonna tell my son that he's gonna I go absolutely kid. nuts. Yeah, I love it. Love it. Here, uh, your kids went as Pokemon for Halloween. He went as Ash two years ago, right. and then Pikachu this time. Yeah. He's, yeah. You're full, raising a good one. <laughs> I knew I was doing something right. Yes. Oh, <laughs> God. Okay. Uh, favorite player growing up? Luther Ellis. I mean, gotta be. It has to right? be. There's no other option. If I can't say him, I would say Von Miller. Okay, That's there we go. That's okay. another really good one. We well, um, won't tell your dad. Okay. If, I t- if I can't say him. Right. Right. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. If you can't say him. Um, very key. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Don't cut that out of the <laughs> Right, yeah. <laughs> for the, the snippet. <laughs> if you had to, uh, or if you could pick a superpower as a superhero, what would it be? I think I'd like, like Wolverine. Like when oh, you heal. Right. Healing you know what it, I mean? Healing like, is important. That's a really interesting answer. I, I, I would like that a lot. That'd be, yeah, because you could like get into some trouble and then pop yeah, you right heal. back. Yeah, and you're good. I'm yeah, fine. See? You know what I mean? Exactly. That yeah. is a pop true right linebacker out. answer if I've ever heard heard it. There like you go. the the just you're just hitting people all the time. It's like I'm fine. I'm fine. I keep going. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. Yeah, it's all good. Yeah. Um, okay, last one. Last okay. One. Um would you rather fight? <laughs> one you're asking him this one I am one okay. horse sized duck or 100 duck sized horses 100 <laughs> duck sized horses okay. birds are mean birds are hard birds mean. are mean geese like, and ducks are the worst yeah, like a, a normal sized goose was an, uh-huh. uh, uh, I don't want anything to do with it let alone a horse sized duck I think yeah. would, no, the thing no. would get me fast that no. yeah no that's scary they you should angry. talk to Kyle Pitts about his disdain for ducks he, yeah, he's scared to death of them. Yeah, when true, when you meet story. when you meet him when you're out on the field running around during quack quack yeah, no. just, <laughs> quack, quack, quack. he's gonna I, get so mad at us. One on ones, quack quack. Yeah. quack. <laughs> <laughs> please, I know. Oh my please gosh, please do please, that. please do that and report back. Okay, let you know how it goes. <laughs> and if it goes well. Right, yeah. <laughs> only if. Only if. And please, 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 to all of you listening, please rate, review, subscribe to the Atlanta Falcons Podcast Network. I'm Scott, that's Tori, that's Caden. Thank you so much for joining the Falcons In Focus podcast presented by Ticketmaster. This was a freaking awesome this was episode. Fun. I, yeah. ho- I hope you all enjoyed it too. Caden, thank you so much for the time. Thank you all so much for Can't having me. Can't wait to see you in red and black. Let's go. Let's go.